Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Tuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 2 from the Jan 2009 PUA paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so part A says to state whether the following statements about accounting are true or false. Okay, so they've given us the items here, and what I've also done is I have also put them across here as well. So first one says accounting records, so let me highlight it. Accounting record, accounting records, sorry, business activities that cause changes in money value. I don't like that phrasing, but that is true, right? So you're gonna see that across here as true. The next item says that accounting reports are useful for good decision-making. Yes, they are, if you don't have proper information, how are you going to make good decisions? So proper, properly prepared and accurate accounting reports are definitely useful for good decision making. So that's definitely true. Next, we have government tax agencies use accounting information to compute taxes. I could very well vouch for the fact that this is true, <laughs> okay? Next, we have that accounting can ensure that profits are made. Okay, so I had a little bit of an issue with this one with the phrasing, but my problem that I have sometimes is I tend to overthink things. Right. So basically how I interpret this is that this account proper accounting can help us keep proper records and make sure that we make proper decisions about selling price and cost price and, and other expenses and these things. So I would put this as true. If you disagree, then please feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section below and explain your particular position and maybe I might change mine. As much as I'm here to teach, I'm also here to learn because I don't know everything. Sometimes we happen upon new information that causes us to change our perceptions and our, our opinions and that's, that's all well and good, right? Learn, always be learning. The final item here for this part of the question says business qualities such as reliability and good service can be accounted for. So no, we cannot put a dollar value. It's very difficult and probably not totally accurate to put a dollar value on qualities, uh, intangible qualities rather, such as reliability and good service. So we are going to put a false for that item there. Okay, that's part A to the question. Let's take a look at part B. Okay, so they're telling us here at the end of November 07, Rennie Joseph used the general journal to make entries for the following transactions. Okay, so the first, okay, so we have five transactions by the way, right? Recorded $200 as provision for depreciation on blenders for the month, recorded $150 as prepaid electricity expense, recorded $210 as commissions earned but not yet received. Recorded $1,005 as a bad debt on the account of Mira Taylor and sold an ice crusher for $430 to Walter Xavier or Xavier who paid Joseph by check. Now the first thing they want us to do is to indicate which of the above transactions would normally be entered in another book of original entry. So they told us that Rennie used the general journal to record those items. Now what are the other books of original entry? You have your sales journal which records only credit sales. Your purchases journal, which records only credit purchases of stock, right? The returns in which journal, returns of which journal, self-explanatory, but only for stock, no other asset. Then you have your cash book, which records all cash and bank transactions, and your general journal, which records everything else. So the item that would go there would be this item five, right? We sold an ice crusher for $430 to Walter Xavier, who paid by check. So once we, Joseph, Renny Joseph, received a check. We will debit the bank account or we'll debit the cash book and enter the information under the bank column. So that's the transaction that would be also entered in the other book of original entry. Now let's take a look at part two to this question. It's telling us to prepare the journal entries, sorry, prepare the general journal of Renny Joseph as at November 30th or 7, 10 marks. So they basically want us to record these five transactions in the general journal. Uh, so let's do it one by one. So the first thing is recorded $200 as provision for depreciation on blenders for the month. So these are adjusting entries. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to bring up my little general journal here. Now, I, I did a real kind of scale on format. I didn't put a date column, didn't put a folio column. I just went straight for general journal. Okay, let me put a DR here and a CR here. All right, okay. So to record depreciation, now there are two different ways to do it. The conventional way for CSEC is that we debit the income statement and we credit the provision for depreciation account. Okay, so that's to record the adjusting entry for depreciation. The other way to do it is to debit the depreciation expense account and credit the provision for depreciation blenders. 
right now item two said if we, we recorded 150 as prepaid electricity expense okay so what we're going to do is we are going to debit the prepaid electricity because prepaid expenses are assets and assets increase with debits and we're going to credit the electricity expense account to remove the prepaid amount from the electricity expense account okay that's also another adjusting entry item three we recorded 210 as commissions earned but not yet received so if we earned it but didn't receive it it's it's basically accrued revenue which is an asset and to record the increase of an asset we have to debit the assets account commissions receivable and we'll credit the commission's revenue account because we didn't receive it but commission's revenue is a revenue we earned it and to record when an income or revenue is earned you have to credit the revenue account so even though we didn't receive it we still record it as being earned because that's the accruals concept whether or not you receive your income once you've earned it you record it as being earned okay the next item item four is to record the writing off of the bad debt from Mira Taylor. So to record the write off of a bad debt, you debit the bad debt's account or bad debt's expense account, and you credit the debtor, Mira Taylor, in this particular case. And the final item is we sold the ice crusher to Walter Xavier, who are, and we received a check. Right now, the easy part is to record the receipt of the check because once you receive a check, your bank account is going up. Bank is an asset. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. So your debit bank account, or you could even put cash book. Now, the credit we will put to the ice crusher at cost account because it is an asset. And if you're selling off your asset, your asset is decreasing. And if your asset is decreasing, you have to credit the asset account, right? Now, to be honest, it should have been a bit more detailed because there is a topic called disposals. While it is no longer on the CSEC POA syllabus, I honestly feel that they should bring it back and they should weigh these questions a bit better. But for the sake of simplicity, we'll treat it as we did there. Credit the ice crusher account and a credit and asset account decreases the asset and it's decreasing because we sold it. Okay, we have a part C to this question. Let's take a look at it very quickly. Okay, so it says over the next six months, Rennie Joseph incurred the following payments by debit card. Now, okay, let's take a look, right? So we have these things here. So December 1st or 7, we have rates prepaid brought forward. Now that's not a payment, nor was it incurred by debit card, but let's not nitpick, right? So we have an opening prepaid expense of $200. Next. January 1st of 8, we paid the quarter year's rates, quarter year's rates paid by check 600. Now, a quarter is three months. If you paid for a quarter of the year's rates by check, and that's 600, that 600 has to be divided by three months to get the monthly charge. 600 divided by three is 200 per month. Now, that actually kind of corresponds with the rates prepaid balance brought forward here of 200 in December. Now, also on March 31st, 2008, we, we paid a half year's rates by check. So a half year is six months. And if you notice, we paid 1200. What well, we just said, it's 200 a month, right? 200 by six months is 1200. So it corresponds. So the rent expense is actually 200 per month. Now, what are they asking us to do? It says to prepare the rates account in the books of Rennie Joseph for the six month period ending May 31st, 2008. Interesting showing the amount to be transferred to the profit and loss account. So that's income statement. Again, this is a relatively old paper, and I guess they were still using some of the old terminology. Now, let's just repeat what they want us to do. They want us to do the rates account for a six-month period ending May 31st of 8. And the dates we have are December 1st, Jan 1st, and March 31st, and we have payments for a quarter and for half a year. All right, this is going to be interesting. So let's pull up our rates account and the first thing we're going to put in is the prepaid rates brought forward, right? So they told us December 1st, rates prepaid was 200. Rates is an expense. A prepaid expense is an asset and assets have debit balances. Now, we have two sets of payments as we can see here. We have the payment on Jan 1st of 600, the payments on March 31st of 1200. So we're going to put two payments in. Of course, they will go on the debit side because when you pay expenses, you are you have to debit them and you're going to credit bank, right? Now comes the interesting part. We have to work out the expense. Your rates expense include the income statement figure. But there's also a prepaid rates expense hiding inside of here. Let me tell you why. Let's go back to the information for a second. So we're going to see, right, so March 31st, so, eight. so March 31st, if the year starts, the calendar year starts on January, 
March 31st is the end of the third month, January, February, and March. Now, in January, we paid a, the court, a quarter year's rates. So January 1st, we paid a quarter of the year's rates, a quarter of a year's three months. So we paid for January, February, and March. And that amount was 600, right? So we said earlier, 600 divided by three is 200 a month. But long story short, again, we paid on Jan 1st, $600, in respect of rates for Jan, Feb, and March. So at March 31st now, it means that that 600 we paid was totally used up. 200 was used up in January, 200 was used up in February, and the remaining 200 would have been used up in March. So now we have to pay more rates again. And on March 31st, we paid half year's rates. So we paid six months worth of, of rates. So at the end of March, right, we paid for the next six months, April, May, June, July, August, and September. April, May, June, July, August, and September. Now, that's 200 a month, and 200 by 6 is 1,200, and we're seeing 1,200 here. So now, remember, we are drawing up the rates account for the year ending May 31st. So remember, at the end of March, we paid for the next six months. April, May, June, July, August, and September. I don't know what I do my hands, sorry about that. Right? April, May, June, July, August, and September. So, if the year is ending May 31st, the six-month period is ending May 31st, sorry, right? It means that out of the 1,200 we paid, April and May are, are going to be used up. So, that means June, July, August, and September have been prepaid at, as at May 31st. Let me repeat that again. At March 31st, we paid for six, the next six months, April, May, June, July, August, and September, right? However you want to see it, <laughs> right? At May 31st, it means we've used up the rates for April, used up the rates for May, and we still have June, July, August, and September already paid or prepaid. So remember, it was $200 a month. Four months prepaid is $800. So we have a prepaid rates expense of $800. And of course, that's an asset, and it's going to be brought down on the debit side. But prior to being brought down on the debit side, you have to be carried down from the credit side. Right? Now, the missing figure. So there's a missing, there's another missing figure. That's the income statement figure. The figure we set out to calculate in the first place, right? So what we're going to do, we're going to add up all the figures on this side. That's going to give us 2000 and we have an 800 prepayment here. The difference is 1200 and that's the income statement figure, right? Now that makes sense because again, we are preparing a rates expense account for six months. We already know that is 200 per month rates expense. So if it's 200 a month and we're preparing an account for six months, it means we've incurred six months worth of rates expense. Six months by 200 a month is 1200. So that's the other way you could have thought about it, right? So of course, when you add going down now in each column, you're going to get the 2000 um, yeah, to show that, of course, the account is in balance, right? And you know what? That's the end of the question. Okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question two from the Jan 2009 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about it, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and be sure to check out my website where you'll find some pretty useful PA handouts. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.